What is going on, you two people? Neo Cards and Comics here today to talk about something we don't talk about a ton on the channel, and that is sealed wax. I occasionally do these little update videos on sealed wax. I don't personally have a vested interest in sealed wax outside of a couple boxes of Marvel cards. That's really about it. And as I look over my shoulder, that stack's dwindling too because I keep ripping it looking for stuff to send the PSA. I don't have anything super high end, but sealed wax has just never really been my game. Uh, I am a weak individual, and if I have sealed product laying around, I am going to want to open it nine times out of ten. So I have just taken the approach. Let's just steer clear of this stuff because then it leads down just empty wax packs laying all around me on the floor. And then I look around and go, oh, Lord, what have I done? Uh, but it is important to still pay attention to the wax market just to kind of see what it's doing. It's a nice, interesting little peek in sometimes on a macro level from a particular draft class or if there's something interesting about that particular print run. So we're going to run through the major three sports today and then take a look at some alternative sports racing uh, and wrestling slash UFC, just to kind of chit chat about those boxes. I am strictly looking at hobby boxes, not first off the line, just straight prism hobby boxes. Uh, it is the most universal thing across the board. So that is what we were looking at today. Prism, whether we all like it or not, still relatively drives the market for the most part, especially on the sealed wax perspective. So that's what we're going to dive into today. Sealed wax hobby boxes. There is one exception to that rule, and I will talk about it when we get there. But with all that being said, like, comment, subscribe. And if you want to check out Market Movers, link in the description down below. We are utilizing their sealed wax feature, which once again, we don't do a ton on the channel, but you can chart and add to your collection sealed wax link in the description of the video for a free one month trial i'm sorry a one dollar first month trial if you want to check that out with all that being said let's dive in to some charts and graphs first up basketball and i kept this stuff to pretty much i don't want to say strictly ultra modern uh, just that stuff just transacts more often it was more readily available for most people to dive in and buy into just easy to find once again, I did not look at retail wax. There's too many different blaster variations and mega box variations. It's such a pain in the butt uh, to try to chart and graph that stuff. You could do it. It's there. But, you know, there's different parallels in each individual one that could swing the value. So I just went hobby boxes. Like I said, nice, simple, easy. And those also tend to lead the market. If a uh, certain year of sealed wax is going to jump up. Usually it's the hobby boxes that does so first, and then they will drag along the other releases. So basketball first, I have pulled up 2020, 2019, 2018, and 2017 Prism basketball hobby boxes. That is LaMelo and Ant-Man, Ja and Zion, Luca and Trey, and Tatum and Mitchell, just for kind of like the high level guys on each individual class. Obviously, as you go back in time, the print count is a lot lower, less of these boxes available, et cetera, et cetera. As you can kind of see here as well, when you chart them out, how few sales there are. Now, for the purposes of this, I did take a little bit of a more long-term view. I dropped this all the way back to October 1st. So that was right before the NBA season actually started. Uh, and once again, going back to the whole print count thing and just kind of how often these things move, you can see, even though 2018 is the least at four, that's also because it's astronomically expensive. 2017, only 18 sold. 2019, 36 have sold. In uh, 2020, 145 have sold. Obviously, the more recent release, more hobby boxes printed, so on and so forth. As we dig into the numbers down here, really didn't hold up super well. 2020 had a strong showing up 70% from the beginning of the season. I remember kind of thinking these were a little cheap, but once again, sealed wax, not really my game up to $2,000 a box. Now this was driven on a pretty good LaMelo season, but a very strong Ant-Man season along with some other ancillary pieces and parts. Uh, Tyrese Maxey played pretty well. Patrick Williams is a little buzzy, even though he really didn't do a whole lot this year. 
But Ant-Man really came on this year and kind of solidified this class as having two pretty good guys to chase. And now Maxi's coming on so far anyways, at least through one game of the playoffs. But he's had a good last part of the season. So not surprising that his stuff could potentially help lift this product just a little bit. You get that extra guy in there, and that's sometimes that's all it takes to really take it to the next level. So that wax box performed extremely well, but once again, pretty cheap coming into season to begin with. 2018 had the biggest drop, 30% discount from 5.8K to 3.8K, but once again, only four boxes sold. Just a general market waning on the older young guys moving on to the new kid on the block luke and trey have been in the league for a while now they're starting to hit that mid-season i'm good my team's kind of mediocre can we punch through we probably need a team shake up to go to the next level our stuff's going to get cheap for a while and then probably spike back up again when we enter the more Giannis years of our career and start being a star player to lead the entire league. We kind of see this all the time. We put a lot of pressure. And when I say we, I'm talking like the hobby in general on card prices on the next shiny thing to immediately go out and win things. Uh, let's remember, not very many young guys lead their team to an NBA title at an early age. Giannis is one of the youngest and he was a 2013 rookie. Uh, Tim Duncan's the other one. That one's kind of a weird exception to the rule because of the way he fell in that draft class and whatnot. But it just doesn't happen very often for the guys to be the alpha on a team. It takes some time. And we are very quick to be like, ah, Luca Trey, nah, they're not doing anything. On to the next shiny object. We did the same thing with Tatum and Mitchell as all eyes filter onto LaMelo and Ant-Man now. And I have a feeling Ant-Man in his playoffs could play extremely well. And I could see his card prices getting juiced going in next season. Uh, and then for the next year or so, the same thing happens. You know, things will start to wane off. And then things will circle back around to like maybe Tatum this year as his prices have really come on late in the back half of the season because people remembered why they liked them so much three or four years ago when he was a rookie or sophomore in the league. Uh, running down the rest of the list here, 2019 Prism basically held steady, down 4%. As much as Zion was non-existent this year, Ja was extremely good. Interesting spec play there on 2019, I guess, if you assume that Zion can actually come back healthy. That would be an interesting one because that price essentially stayed flat with Zion doing nothing and Ja carrying the load. I don't see Ja going anywhere anytime soon, and if Zion can actually come back and look good, that could give 2019 product a little bit of a boost. 2017, probably the best deal out there given that it's not super, super heavily printed. You have Tatum, you have Mitchell. Uh, if Tatum would go on and win an NBA title this year or maybe even make the NBA Finals or have a really big Eastern Conference Finals, that could give that product a little bit of juice. You also have Mitchell in there, who is desperate probably to get on another team. Something is going to happen with that Jazz team. Either he's going to get dealt or Gobert is going to get dealt or they're both going to get dealt. Regardless, that team's going to get shaken up a little bit. Uh, and anything would help Donovan Mitchell's value at this point, though they are probably going to move on to the second round due to the Luka injury. 2018, the price point is so high to buy into that, but that class is really good. You got Luka and you got Trey at the top. You got SGA, who everyone kind of forgets about because he's stuck on the Thunder. Michael Porter Jr., who's injured. Colin Sexton, who's injured. And a cast of other characters in that 2018 class. Very, very good deep class, but price tag extremely high. Uh, so generally speaking, other than the super inflated 2018 wax prices, everything basically held pretty good and 2020 had a nice little rise up. We don't know about 2021 yet because it's not out yet, which makes this a little bit weird. Um, so that's basketball. I'm based off narrative streets. I am not surprised by any of these general price movements. Uh, let's pop over and look at football. Once again, prism. Hobby boxes, 2020, 2019, 2018, 2017. I went back to September 1st for these. So that takes us to right as football season was starting. Uh, and once again, to kind of give us a quick rundown, 2017, extremely rare. Uh, that's your Patrick Mahomes box and Deshaun Watson. 2018 is Baker, Lamar, um, Sam Darnold, I guess, Daniel Jones, I guess. 2019 is Kyler and Daniel Jones, very weak class. And then 2020 is Herbert and Burrow, 
along with a cast of other characters. And then 2021 will be loaded if it ever actually comes out. Not necessarily sure instead of talent, but there'll be a lot of bites at the Apple because that was a big quarterback draft class. So as we scroll down here, 2017 sold only four boxes, not surprising. And the price point's extremely high on those. They did come down a lot though. They were 10K to start the season. They came all the way down to 7K. One has not sold since January. Once again, these do not pop up very often, down 30% on those. 2018 kind of lost a little luster this year with Baker completely falling apart. Uh, Darnold basically being done. Uh, Lamar played pretty okay-ish, uh, but Josh Allen's the main guy from that box that you want at this point in time with Lamar being a close second. Those boxes held relatively flat, slightly down 10%. Uh, once again, that could flip if Lamar comes back and plays pretty good or Josh Allen goes to a Super Bowl or something. Uh, you have a decent amount of chance there. Allen alone is almost worth the chase. And then if you throw in a little bit of Lamar and then if, you know, Baker does literally anything, uh, maybe that box gets a little bit more juice to it. 2019's is the dud. Uh, it's all based on Kyler Murray, essentially, uh, with a little bit of Daniel Jones mixed in. And Kyler has been not great. 660 for a Prism Hobby box of 2019 to me, and that's down 20% does feel a little cheapish. Uh, that last one sold in March. I'm guessing it's probably hard to find one for that actual price. You might have to wait out an auction or something, but you are tied to Kyler. That's a, that's an, that's just an interesting price point of that because it is so cheap. When you look at that box price compared to all the other ones, now the other ones have multiple quarterbacks to chase. Who knows what's going to go on with Kyler? He's in contract negotiations that aren't really going anywhere. Uh, he maybe could potentially get moved to a different team or maybe to the Oakland A's. Nobody knows. Uh, and then 2020 is the golden child with Burrow and Herbert. That's the big boy one. Uh, 2.3K for that one. Right in line with 2018. I That's an interesting one. I think I would rather have 2020 Prism just based off the fact that Herbert and Burrow probably got a little bit more juice to them than Allen and Lamar combined. And that's Allen I would put ahead of those two, but Lamar I'd put behind those two. And you also got a little Justin Jefferson mixed in there. So that's a little interesting. Uh, and a few other little pieces and parts. 2300 bucks for that box. And that one is up the most, up 53%. Once again, not surprising. The rise of Burrow and Herbert during last year's football season really drove box prices on those. That's an interesting one, though. It is a little bit pricey to get into. Get into that one for 2300 bucks. Once again, I am not a wax person, so please do not take uh, what I am spewing as investment advice. As always, do your own research. But just buying those boxes for essential and it basically getting both Herbert and Burrow in one purchase is kind of nice. That's part of the appeal to wax. You're not solely tied to one player. Uh, you're buying the basket, if you will. So, you know, would you rather have a box of Prism Hobby or a Silver Prism PSA 10 from one of those guys? Uh, it's kind of an interesting question when you really think about it. Actually, a Prism Hobby box is probably cheaper. Uh, I think those Silver Prisms, I believe, are around 3K. Don't hold me to that. I'm going off the top of my head. Uh, but you could probably get a box of Prism Hobby for around the same price, if not less, than a Silver Prism PSA 10. And that essentially gives you a bite at both those players instead of just the one. So interesting angle to take there if you're looking to buy and hold. But once again, don't be weak. Hide them from yourself. Lock them in a, Don't lock them in a storage unit. Have your wife hide it from you. It's not where your kids can get it. Uh, but very interesting angle there on the Prism Hobby or... A silver prism of one of the players. Curious, what would you take? For the hell of it, I did pull it up. Uh, silver Burrow is 2700 Herbert is 3 k So like I said, right around 3 k ish was my best guess there. So you can essentially have a 2020 Prism Hobby box and $700, depending on the player that you go off of. A couple hundred, let's just call it a couple hundred bucks, or one of their silver prisms. I think if I was looking to buy to flip or just buy to hold, but I guess more so buy to hold and not have to worry about it. This kind of seems like the smarter play. So just interesting angle to take there. It Once again, not something I would do. I'm not running out to buy the hobby box. I, because I like the flip game, 
would be more willing to actually buy the single card. But if you're actually just looking at it from a straight, I want to buy it, I want to put it in a closet, I want to forget about it, probably the smarter play to snag one of these. Safer. Less less variance. So interesting little comparison there. Once again, curious for your thoughts and comments down below on that. Let's switch over, look at a little baseball. I did not pull Bowman. Uh, I looked at just strictly Topps Chrome. Bowman is a whole adventure in amongst itself. There's a billion different products, and depending on which one the player's first Bowman card is, it causes all sorts of chaos. So we went 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. Uh, Topps Chrome Baseball. Non-update. I did include one update box, and that was 2018. Uh, and that is a mega box, not a hobby box. And the reason that I include that is, is because that is Soto's rookie year. Uh, or his rookie was in update rather versus regular 2018. Let's scroll down here and time horizon on this one. I went October 1st. I figured that put it right at the end of the regular season uh, and seemed like a good line of demarcation in regards for hobby boxes. As we scroll down here, 2019, and I did not do Jumbo either. 2019, Tops Chrome Hobby down 20%. That's Vlad. 2018, up 30%. That is Acuna and Otani. So even though actually Otani's, a lot of his Tops Chrome refractors have been down uh, over the offseason, uh, the Hobby Box is actually up. 2018, Tops Chrome Update, uh, up 62%. Once again, that's a mega box. Uh, these things are super, not super hard to find, but absolutely loaded. You have Soto's Topps Chrome Update Rookie. Uh, you have an Otani Update Rookie and an Acuna Update Rookie. Obviously, most people chase the main uh, true rookies if they're not in Update. But you get a little extra juice there. But Soto's the big chase on that one. Uh, that's up 62%. Not surprising. That's a really nice portfolio of stuff to get there. 2021. Uh, kind of a weaker class overall, uh, not a very juiced product. Those are only sitting at 170. Uh, I'm trying to think who the big chase even is in there. I guess it's Cabrian Hayes from the Pirates. Who else? Jazz Chisholm from the Marlins. Ugh, that's really about it. That's not a great class. Maybe someone comes out of the woodwork there. You never really know. If you were just wanted to buy on a spec play, 170 bucks for a hobby box just to chill on. Doesn't seem like the worst thing in the world. Uh, and then 2020 is the Lubob class, uh, Bo Bichette, uh, and a few others. That one's sitting at 255 down 20%. So that one's actually also pretty cheap. 2019 um, with Vlad in it. Being down a little bit is a little intriguing, but he's kind of, I think he's the lone horse in that box other than maybe Jordan, who doesn't get a ton of love. I'm, I'm missing or not remembering my full rookie classes. Should have done my homework a little bit more before this one. Uh, but that's baseball. My favorite one out of all of these, even though it is up quite a bit, is that 2018 Chrome update and 2018 Chrome in general. Have an Otani and Acuna in one box and then the mega boxes at 575. Price-wise, I don't know if that's a good price or not. I don't follow the market close enough. I just know that it's up, and I do know that that box is absolutely potentially loaded. Obviously, we're not opening these. You'd be sitting on them sealed. Let's look at some alternatives here. Chrome F1 2020. The ultimate F1 is a pump and dump sport uh, that everyone likes to talk about. Whether it is or not, we don't know because it's never actually dumped. Uh, this is the Hobby Boxes. Back last spring when they first debuted, they sat around. This is Sapphire and regular, by the way. Uh, Sapphire was 700 bucks. The blue line is regular, which was 575 They started taking off and have literally never dropped. Uh, from late summer to fall, they spiked up. Uh, the season took the winter off. They flattened out, really didn't do much. Guess what? Racing's back, and look at the prices now. Uh, these things have had an absolutely insane run. I went back a full year on this. They are up 600% on regular F1 and 425% on Sapphire F1. Um, Sapphire is at 4K a box. Regular tops. Chrome is at 3400 a box. Absolutely insane rises. 
I get people want to call it a pump and dump. I get it. I really do. But stuff usually has a pullback by now when it's artificially inflated pump and dump. This hasn't had that yet. It started off at what it was. It leveled up. It flattened out. It didn't pull back hardly at all. And then it leveled up again with the start of the season. And remember, this stuff was not printed into the ground. Uh, as much as we see these being flung around, there is not a lot of these out there in the grand scheme of things when it compares to other sports. And the demand is still there and the demand continues to grow. Uh, I get that it may not be for everybody. That's fine. It's not for me. I don't own a single F1 card. I don't plan on owning any F1 cards. But there is a market there for it, whether we like it or not, whether we understand it or not. The prices keep increasing on this stuff. And with the limited supply and the high demand, I don't know that I see it changing anytime soon. But we'll see what happens. If only we could all go back in time and buy cases of F1 back last year at this time, we'd be sitting on a small fortune right now. If you bought cases of F1 and held, uh, they are like gold bricks because uh, these things have just gone full nuclear. Let's look a little more recent release. I pulled up WWE Prism and UFC Prism. Now, I couldn't tell you who's in either. Well, I could tell you who's in WWF Prism to a little bit. I could not tell you who is in UFC Prism. I don't know a thing about UFC. But I just thought they were interesting comparisons. UFC Prism came out around the same price as WWE Prism, a little bit less at $1,000 a box. Uh, kind of hung around that price forever. And then over the last six months have started to climb up and they're up to 2K a box. WWE Prism came out at 800. Uh, this says it at 900, but you could have got them at 800. They did spike up to 1200 for a couple days there. And now they are pulling back because retail is in the wild is my speculation here. Uh, and they're back down to around a thousand. So whether you like WWE or not from a sealed wax perspective is could we potentially see it follow the same path of UFC where they, these things languish around a thousand, 1100 bucks or so, and just kind of sit there for a while. And then do we eventually see prices start to climb as supply dwindles on these? Could it be a very similar situation? I don't really know. We're kind of in uncharted territory here with WWE prism. Um, there's not really rookies to drive it. I mean, there's a couple rookies in there. It's more legends based, autograph based, parallel based. It's it's really getting carried on the fact that its name is Prism. There is a bunch of Topps Chrome's card versions of this stuff. Same with UFC though. So just an interesting comparison there on. I know that they're not exactly the same. Calm down, UFC people. Calm down, WWE people. But as an alternative sport. I just find it interesting comparing the two boxes against each other because I could potentially see them maybe going down around the same path where WWE Prism just kind of sits and then eventually starts to slowly tick up. So that's all I have for you guys and girls today. Hope this one was informative. Like I said, I don't cover wax a ton, uh, but every once in a while, I do like to just kind of peek over there and take a look at it to see what's going on on that market. So smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't. We will catch you guys and girls on the next one. Peace.